Philip, last week the junta declared a month-long ceasefire with ethnic armed groups. This latest announcement throwing that into question, presumably. Yes, absolutely. And, and that ceasefire was declared with caveats, which was that they basically had a, uh, an excuse to uh, resume activities. This is the military, um, if, if their security was threatened. So, I mean, it wasn't an absolute ceasefire. But the backdrop to this is that Myanmar has had ethnic conflicts ever since 1948, uh, independence from Britain. Uh, there have been insurgencies along its borders with the many um, ethnic groups. Um, in recent years, the military had reached ceasefires with most of the major groups, but they still have a deep antipathy towards the military. There's a long running sort of, um, there's been long running battles and wars and very nasty conflicts fought between these two group sides, the, the ethnic um, armies and the military. And so, you know, when, when the when the people takes the when the popular opposition has sort of mounted in the streets of the main cities in Myanmar and the main uh, towns, the ethnic groups have a lot of them have an automatic sort of support and sympathy for those groups and um, and opposition to the military. So if these groups can come together, and it's a big if because there's been a lot of infighting between ethnic factions as well. If they can come together in some form of sort of joint uh, force, and uh, you have the political opposition in um, in the heartlands of Myanmar to the um, to the coup, then, then the military face a very, very significant challenge. And Philip, the junta, meanwhile, continuing Philip, its crackdown not only in the streets, but also through the courts. Yes, that's right. They've issued arrest warrants for um, now we're hearing 40, it was initially 20, but 40 sort of well-known celebrities, actors, social media bloggers, um, and who they accuse of sort of trying to sort of sow dissent um, in the ranks of the armed forces. These are people who've been very um, prominent online in sort of in opposing the coup and have um, and have, have quite high public profiles. Now the military is really trying to crack down in the information war as well, and um, they've they've sort of cut off most internet connections, and they're now going for these people who had been prominent players in the sort of social media battle and struggle for influence. Um, so um, they've also charged um, Aung San Suu Kyi, who's the deposed leader. She's been charged under official Secrets Acts um, crimes in the last few days. So all the indications here are they're going to use the full force of their interpretation of laws, of their interpretation of statutes and their control of the authorities at the moment to try and uh, bring, to try and crush dissent both, um, both online through the courts and in the streets. Um, at the moment, though, despite all that, um, more than two months, as you say, after the coup, you know, there are still people turning out. The civil disobedience movement, which is the strike movement across the country, is so strong. And uh, despite this internet crackdown, people are still getting images out that show those sort of horrific scenes and, and daily attacks by security forces on protesters. Philip Sherwell in Bangkok.